I'm Bruce Gordon, author of the book, the Facebook page, and YouTube channel, all called The Spirit of Attack. I'll tell you what it was like when I went through pilot training back in 1958. After AFROTC training at college, I reported to Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio, Texas, as a second lieutenant. I went through basic training there and then went into pilot training, first to Graham Air Force Base in Mariana, Florida, where I flew the T-34, T-28, got my wings. And then I went to advanced training for pilot training for fighters, Laredo Air Force Base, Texas, in the T-33, and then advanced training in the F-86L Sabrejet. Soon after I arrived at Lackland, they took all the pilot trainees and sat us down, gave us a helmet and a parachute harness, and took what was later called the hero photo. This was a nice photo to send home to your family, saying what you were doing, but the real purpose was rather grim. If you got killed while in training, they wanted to have a picture to send back to your hometown paper, something that looked good and made you look like a hero. It turned out that virtually every squadron that I flew with one of the first things they did was take a hero photo of you usually standing on the ladder getting into the cockpit of your aircraft. I left Lackland Air Force Base in Texas and went to Graham Air Base in Mariana, Florida, that's in the panhandle of Florida. First thing they did is take me out and take a hero picture of me in front of a T-34, just like the old picture, but this time I had an airplane. The T-34A Mentor was developed from the civilian Beechcraft Bonanza. It had a 225 horsepower engine and other versions were upgraded to a more powerful engine. We flew 10 hours dual in the T-34 before we were able to go solo. I remember my instructor yelling at me, we can teach monkeys to fly spaceships. Why can't we teach you to fly an airplane? On my last flight before solo, we were coming back to the traffic pattern and were only about a thousand feet above the ground. My instructor took the airplane and said, I've got it and he brought the airplane into a spin, and then he said, you've got it. I grabbed the controls and pulled the airplane out of a spin just above the ground, and he said, I knew you could do that. Now you can go solo. The T-34 had a fully instrumented cockpit. You can see there the stick and the rudder pedals, the we had differential braking on the rudders, as you do on, on the rudder pedals, which you do on virtually all aircraft these days. On the right was a pole handle, red, that when you pulled that, you could uh, throw off the canopy to bail out. The throttle quadrant was very functional with a throttle, mixture control, and propeller control, and the trim tabs were manual. We had to do a blindfold cockpit check before they let us go solo. From 225 horsepower in the T-34, we went to 800 horsepower in the T-28. That's the, my instructor standing in back, and I am kneeling in front. I was surprised and impressed with how much more powerful the T-28 was than the T-34. It climbed rapidly and flew at much higher altitudes. We could do impressive aer aerobatics, and we went on both day 
and night cross-country flights. When I graduated from primary pilot training at Graham, I got my wings and I was officially an Air Force pilot. After graduating from the T-28, I went to basic fighter school at Lackland Air Force Base, Texas, where I flew the T-33. This was my first jet airplane with a 4,600 pound thrust engine. It had a maximum Mach of 0.75, but would climb up to 40,000 feet. It was a very useful, effective airplane, and I flew it again many times throughout my career. After the T-33, I went to the F-86L in advanced pilot training at Moody Air Force Base, Georgia. The F-86L had a radar set. It had an afterburner. It could go supersonic in a dive. And it had 24 rockets in the pod. You see right underneath the cockpit, there's a pod that would come down and fire 24 rockets in a shotgun pattern. This was my first real fighter. The F-86L made us think like we were real fighter pilots, and we began to have parties like real fighter pilots. This was a wineskin party. I took this photo. We poured wine into a wineskin, and then you would try to squirt it into your mouth from a distance. And by golly, you could get thoroughly drunk on wine. I'll tell one story about each of the aircraft that I flew in training. On the T-34, one of my friends went out to do some solo aerobatics. He was doing solo aerobatics and he ran into a vulture, a big black bird. It came crashing into the cockpit, hit him in the face, and then dropped into his lap. But it wasn't dead. It was alive. And he called an emergency and managed to get back to the base. He landed and I heard from the doctor who followed him down the runway that when he, the doctor got to the runway, he climbed up on the wing and found the pilot in the cockpit beating on the vulture with his flashlight. That doctor gave him some knockout drops and sent him home to sleep it off. People ask what it's like to be blacked out in a fighter. Well, the T-28 was similar to a World War II fighter could go over 300 miles an hour. My instructor took us up for my first aerobatics and went into a steep dive preparing for an Emmelman. He went to the dive and as he pulled out, I remember the eyelids being pulled down over my eyes and I was Suddenly, I couldn't see as I was grayed out, and then I blacked out. I actually was dreaming that I was somewhere uh, on a beach, as I remember. And then I came to, as he got to the top of the Immelman, and he eased the G's, and he rolled over. I came to, and the world was spinning, and I had no idea where I was, and I was kind of thrashing around in the cockpit, I remember. And then I came to, and it was all right. And he says, okay, now it's your turn. You do it. <laughs> You've heard about a plane being behind the power curve. Well, I saw it on a T-33 once. I was assigned to mobile control to be out there and watch all the takeoffs and landings, make sure the pilots had their gear down and all that. And one T-33 with a student pilot at controls started his takeoff roll, and he over-rotated on his takeoff, pulling his nose up too high. He actually got a little bit off the ground, but he was behind the power curve. He drifted off a little bit to the side of the runway, and still going quite fast, he 
then touched down again beside the runway, rolling fast, still trying to get in the air. He went through the fence at the end of the runway into the desert, and I saw his him come to a stop. He uh, he jet blew his canopy. His canopy went way up in the air. And actually, the canopy came back down on top of the airplane, uh, doing a lot of damage. He had still had the engine going full speed. It left a cloud of de desert dust. And I could see the ambulances and the fire trucks chasing him. And they, he got out of the cockpit and ran and ran, and they had to go chase him down. They got a new wing commander while I was at Moody Air Force Base in Georgia. The, everyone was drawn up into massed ranks on the parade ground. And the agent called out, report, A flight, President Account for sir. B flight, all President Account for sir. C flight, all President Account for sir. D flight, all President Account for sir. The agent turns around and says to the outgoing commander, Sir, the wing is all president unaccounted for, sir. The outgoing commander turned to the incoming commander and said, Sir, I present the command. And the incoming commander said, Sir, I accept the command. At that moment, 16 F-86s in close formation flew low over the parade ground and started a right turn up to altitude. As they came over, two of the F-86s collided in midair. The planes pulled off, the pilots ejected, and the planes crashed. That taught us something about the military concept of responsibilities of command. The new commander had accepted command of the unit before the crash occurred. Therefore, the crash was his responsibility. Two days later, he had to fly up to Washington and tell the Pentagon why he was responsible for two lost aircraft and what he was going to do to prevent it in the future. And he had been in command for less than two minutes when it happened. I graduated from F-86 training in Georgia and was reassigned to F-102s at Geiger Field in Spokane, Washington. And the first thing they did is take me out and take a hero picture of me. My Air Force operational career had begun. I have written a book, The Spirit of Attack, about my Air Force experiences and telling some stories that I heard as a fighter pilot. You can get it for almost $35 from Amazon, or if you don't like to pay so much, just send $20 to me directly, and I'll autograph it and mail it to you, postage and taxes paid at the above address.